So, as I was saying, this is a military mouthpiece. Uh, I would use it as a principal mouthpiece in a trumpet ensemble. Principal is the basic uh, notes, but it makes a very heroic sound. And this, this instrument that was made for me, the first bell changeable instrument made from, uh, from a, a basic instrument from Adolf Eger, his son Reini Eger in Basel, made this bell changeable for me. This is a Renaissance bell. And this is a middle Baroque bell, very similar to this bell here from Leonard Ea III. It has a knauf that's also changeable and removable, and it makes a big difference in the sound. But I wanted, first of all, oh, this is another bell from uh, a, a next uh, development, more the direction of that instrument. This is from Kodish, but it's a much flatter bell, you can see, and it's a bigger in its uh, diameter at the end. You can see it's much larger, and it has, it's pure silver, so it has an, another uh, a character of sound and projection. Well, if I play this bell, this Renaissance bell. We played Fantini one time, right? We got it? You don't. Fantini? Okay, I'll just play a little Fantini alone. So that's quite a different character of sound than you would expect from a trumpet. And this is uh, the heroic way of playing the trumpet. There's nothing super subtle about it. It doesn't mean that you can't play sensitive with it. That's the, the first sonata from Girolamo uh, Fantini that I was just playing. We play, played that in concert. You don't have any music with you, right? Doesn't matter. Or isn't that that's isn't that here, underneath everything there? Here. There we are. Okay. So. Number one. Next time we'll practice that before we record it. But uh, you get the idea that the thing has a, a very, very uh, intensive character, like you would not expect from a trumpet, uh, of a modern trumpet. You can't get a sound like that out of a modern trumpet. Simple as that. Um, and it's because it's this with this mouthpiece. Because it's a, if I play a smaller mouthpiece, what people, a lot of people have been playing for played a long time, like Friedemann and Immer, or Edward Tarr, uh, Donald Smithers, or whatever, it sounds like this. Which is another kettle of fish, as we would say. But I really like this uh, intensity of the thing, intensity of a mouthpiece, and you can really see that even though this is much bigger than a Bach one or much bigger than most people play on a natural trumpet, this is way bigger. And you have to consider the fact that if it's, a, if it's built like that, it's more for when you're riding a horse. If you're riding a horse and, and you close up both of the, the um, let me just, uh, the, oh, this, by the way, this instrument has vented holes here to intonate. Basically, I open a hole, and then it resonates only that part of the instrument. And it, it, it allows me to, to uh, manipulate the intonation. If I close them, 
with these simple little plugs with screws. Then it's another kettle of fish all, at, all together. I'll keep I'll, no holes and I'll just play straight the way this instrument then is to be approached. Which is fine, I didn't open any holes anyway. You can hear that it's not tempered. So to play with a tempered instrument with this is a problem. Unless the instrument then is tuned to be not tempered. So it's naturally tuning. Uh, if I go on. Well, I have to change the position of the tongue so that the note, the seventh overtone, the eleventh overtone, the thirteenth overtone, is then manipulated to make intonation that my ear really doesn't want to hear because it's tempered. I'm a modern person. I live in the modern times. I'm used to modern intonation and modern tempered. So that's why these holes were invented, once again, with the holes. Now you're probably wondering, well, how would that sound on the trumpet to catch you if you played that? Well, it wouldn't sound like that unless I played a big mouthpiece like that. But if I use this mouthpiece and try to do that, I'm going too flat here. Mm -mm, let me use a bigger, bigger bell or another bell here. An original bell. Come on, baby. Get this over here and take another bell and put that in the instrument like this. And try it again. Well, I think this mouthpiece is just too big for this instrument. If I use this one, though, well, maybe with practice that would work. Uh, this instrument I'm used to playing, I played this instrument since 1987. And this instrument I've played since, 19, seven, since 2017, which is a difference in how many years? 30. 30 years practice. So I have a set of slides and bells and whatever, and I'm interested in finding three new colleagues that are interested in learning how to play this instrument together with me. I don't pretend to be a master on it. But I think I figured out how it works and how it can work. And um, besides that, I'd like to play a little bit of Bach for you because I really believe that that's how Johann Sebastian Bach, his solo trumpet, Gottfried Reicher, played. <laughs> 